Hello. Today I'm going to talk about uh, THX-138, uh, which I have right here. It's the first film uh, by George Lucas. Um, it's the first movie he uh, made. Uh, he It was produced by Francis Ford Coppola. And it is a film that uh, this American Zoetrope Company, Coppola's company, which he wanted a bunch of filmmakers to come and join and just make movies. This was their first uh, film that to be produced, and it was a box office failure. So uh, it kind of it seemed to disappear for a little bit. Um, it did come back later on, you know, thanks to Coppola's success with films like uh, The Godfather One and Two, for instance. Um, that kind of helped uh, rejuvenate that uh, company. However, um, this was the first film that got produced by it. Um, George Lucas is a friend of his, of Coppola's, as people know. He was his Coppola was his mentor, and uh, he got him a deal. Uh, Coppola got Lucas a deal to make this movie. It's based off of a short that Lucas made in college, which won him a bunch of awards. And he really just... It's such an interesting film. Um, I feel I'm going to spoil some stuff in the movie, so just be aware of that. Um, it's not necessarily my intention, but I it is a... THX is a cult film. Uh, it really became popular... Because, after the fact, because of Star Wars and George Lucas. It was directed by Lucas. He made Star Wars, so people went, bought the VHS, bought the Laserdisc, bought the DVDs and the Blu-rays, and it's now a fairly known, decently well-known movie. Um, place within the Star Wars community. Uh, I will say, at the very least, uh, it was that kind of those people who are fans of Star Wars have probably seen this movie. Science fiction movies or fans probably have seen it. Maybe not, but you know there's a good chance they have. Um, it stars Robert Duvall and Donald Pleasance, and um, essentially the film is uh, it's set in the future, yet the it's George Lucas says it's really about what was going on in the 70s, late 60s and early 70s, the kind of climate and stuff. That's really what uh, THX is essentially about. It's kind of a commentary on that kind of thing. And um, it's very good. Uh, it's a very good film. Uh, but I did again, I said before, I make this series with the intention of just having, uh, talking about movies I enjoy and love, and I wouldn't be talking about some movie I didn't like on here, because, you know, uh, film criticism is a huge thing. It's very popular. I'm sure I'd get more views and stuff if I just talked about stuff that I thought blew. Some might be controversial, some maybe not. But, you know, I, I, I just enjoy... I enjoy this film. I enjoy the works of George Lucas. Um, there are some people, the filmmakers, who I just enjoy their work, their overall work. Some might not be perfect, but sometimes their imperfections are redeeming. And I feel like some of the imperfections of this film, there's some sort of redeemable qualities into that, in that it's his first movie, it's George Lucas' first movie. It's expanding upon the short film he made. And it's really interesting. It's the performance Donald Pleasance gives is quite it's fairly remarkable. Um, now would it go down as one of his best performances ever? Maybe not. Uh, it is more quiet. It's a more quiet uh, performance, let's say. Um
one thing in this, like everyone takes drugs that you're sedated and you just are kind of like mindless and you don't really think for yourself and you're just going about your business, essentially doing your job, same thing every day, and uh, THX is uh, his roommate. She, you know, he, uh, she wanes him off of his medication, or takes, you know, takes the stuff out of his medicine and puts it back together and takes stuff and he kind of gets sick because he's, you know, as you could say, like, you know, he's having withdrawals. He's so much, he's so used to taking his medication that he begins to be sick. This is the director's cut, and I know some people aren't fond of this because there is some digital stuff in this. Um, but this is George Lucas. I think we should all know by now. I mean, his OCD, he, um, the things he, uh, this is probably what he wanted to kind of uh, see back then. Makes changes a lot. Makes a lot of changes in Star Wars. I've said on record I've never had a problem with those changes in Star Wars. Yeah, some are, could be cut or reduced fairly heavily, but, you know, I, I don't mind, really. It's his vision. If he can get it the way he wants, whether we love or hate it, hey, at least there's that. He has that. He, get, he can get his vision across. For better or worse, I guess. Um, but yeah, he's. But yeah, THX. I don't know. Uh, it's me just talking about the movie. I don't really want to. I guess. I guess because it's a cult film, has a cult following. Not a whole lot of people have seen it. I suggest to see it. I think you will enjoy it. Especially if you enjoy Star Wars, if you enjoy George Lucas's works overall, like if you've seen American Graffiti, I think you should see this. Um, I also kind of think uh, maybe this is the kind of films uh, he wanted Star Wars to be. Um, <clears throat> granted, yeah, it was supposed to be melodramatic, and uh, Star Wars wasn't, it's a space opera. But seeing this and how it was his first film, um, perhaps initially in the early days of uh, the thought of Star Wars, maybe he wanted to make something along the lines of this, but then realized how nobody really went to see this movie, and those that did, it didn't seem like it made an impression at all on them. Like, kind of the way he hoped it would. Uh, and so he's, like, just switched tactics, and he made Star Wars the way that it is now. And that's just my thought. I, I could be entirely, completely wrong. Um, though, if I ever did get a chance to meet George Lucas and talk to him uh, in depth with various things in his career, uh, then... Perhaps I might bring that up. Maybe I might say, could my thought on this be somewhat accurate? Or is it completely wrong? And you never for a second ever thought of considering making Star Wars in the same vein as THX-138. Um, also, it's interesting, it's good to know, THX-138 has been a staple of Lucas's filmography. Minus one one. This is a license plate in American Graffiti. Uh, Mark Hamill ad libbed the line in Star Wars um, Prison and Transfer from Cell Block 1138. Um, George Lucas didn't like that. He didn't like that he said that, but I guess when they were editing the film, 
and saw the takes that worked and all. I guess he warmed up to the idea or thought it was in a bad line to say, so he just kept it in. Or something like, like that. And it's been in pretty much everything George Lucas has been a part of, at least produced. Uh, all six Star Wars films he did, which I already included a, a moment with uh, the original Star Wars Episode Four, it's in the uh, Indiana Jones films, and even some fans actually they even uh, mention Eleven Thirty Eight and various things. I think people who just like George Lucas and uh, his work or something, they kind of want to do some sort of tribute to him. Now, in Robot Chicken, they have various 1138 stuff. And they're specialists. You can look out for that. Like, there's like this. Oh, here's my cousin. His name is THX1138. Like, which is the IG88. The bounty hunter, his cousin. Looks similar like him, and he has this name. And it has the THX sound. You know, yeah, THX is the reason why that company, Lucas, helped create um, is called THX. And with a sound system, kind of a theaters and THX sound. And then there's Skywalker sound, which, you know, he uh, uh, made to develop a sound within films, and then this is like the afterwards, like after the film is complete, try and make it as sound as great as possible. Essentially. Uh, um, yeah. I enjoy this film. Uh, I'm sure that if you're a Lucas film, or a Lucas fan, uh, you 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 enjoy it. You're a Star Wars fan. You've probably seen it. Um, oh, another uh, little uh, thing with 11:38 as reference. Um, in the game La Noire, if you look at the one of the first levels when you like, find a gun, when you look at it on the serial number. Serial number. There's like 1138, and uh, that's a clear nod to this film and George Lucas in regard because Lucas has put that in and pretty much everything he's been associated with in one way or another. Um, and yeah, that's really all I've got to say about this film. Uh, I didn't really talk about spoilers, but you know, could have talked about the end, but I understand there may be some who haven't seen it, and it's a pretty good, uh, uh, decent ending, I feel. I think it's a good ending. Um, it's a bit hopeful, I'd say, because it is kind of a bleak film, not just from my description, but when you watch it, it, is, it seems a little bleak. Um, it's also not long. Uh, this film is actually 88 minutes. Um, so, you know, if you set like 90 minutes out in your life, or you're able to spare 90 minutes, you can watch this and have two minutes to spare, essentially. Um, it's a good watch. I enjoy it. Um, if you're, again, if you're a fan of George Lucas and yet for and yet you haven't seen this movie, see it. If you're a Star Wars fan, I think you might enjoy watching this, uh, especially just for the uh, even if it's just for the fact that it's the cr first film by the creator of Star Wars. This film actually did inspire somebody uh, to make movies. Actually, um, you hear how Star Wars inspired people. Well. Frank Darabont, the man who made the Shawshank Redemption and the Green Mile, he saw this movie and he said that's the movie that made him want to make films. It's the movie that made him want to be a director. So, in a way, not only do we have Star Wars to thank for 
so many great filmmakers today, but we also have this one. And Dara Vaughn's just like, at least just one uh, notable uh, filmmaker who's uh, attributed this film to helping uh, them discover what they wanted to do at an early age. So, there is influence with this film too. So, maybe that has some importance to it, or maybe not. Uh, just has only importance to those that got inspired to make movies or uh, any or anything else. Maybe that's it. But thought it was just a fun thing to mention uh, just before I end this. So, uh, yeah, take care. Hope you have a good day. And uh, till next time, peace out, and I'll see you later.